So the video, the video streaming has started. Um, this is John Neuenhausen, who actually started with Geeks, uh, introduced to Geeks uh, last for them, and that's now, is now a major contributor. So welcome, John. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, um, well, I uh, was a major, major contributor, uh, but my talk is uh, about something that has to do with geeks and is n not geeks. Um, it has derailed my contributions a bit. I've worked on uh, the cross-compilation uh, infrastructure, specifically uh, building uh, min GW uh, cross-compiler uh, and had a lot of help and fun from uh, Manolis, who's working on the herd. He'll start, his talk is uh, next. Um, but this is something completely different. I was inspired to look at uh, Geeks um, last year. Um, I started playing, I was running Debian, and I've uh, run Geeks for uh, Geeks as a package manager on Debian for I think three or four months, and in that time I migrated all the packages that I needed for my own development and for my client's development that I wanted software for, uh, until everything was packaged in Geeks, and then uh, I took the plunge. That's a nice way of doing it. Um, going off the deep end can also be inspiring, I guess, because using Geeks on Debian uh, can be done, but it, it's also, it has fragility aspects, so I don't know. Um, so when I started uh, doing, uh, so what is MESS? <coughs> uh, MESS is uh, full source bootstrapping. Um, so what is uh, bootstrapping? Uh, do I need to explain that uh, here for, who, who doesn't know about bootstrapping, the bootstrapping problem? Okay, most of you know, so uh, it's the question, where do compilers come from, who compiled the compiler or the chicken and egg problem? Um, so um, how am I going to do full source bootstrapping? Um, my idea was to write a tiny scheme interpreter in, uh, in hex or in simple C, and there it gets fuzzy, that's why this talk. And uh, when I have the scheme interpreter in hex, what do we do? I, uh, in, in scheme, uh, I write a C compiler, and the C compiler then compiles um, GCC, or um, maybe Guile, or, and that's another messy point, maybe you have ideas. Um, <laughs> and when MESS has a C compiler, then we have MESSCC, which is the name of the C compiler. So, um, I have something that actually works, but I uh, look at it as being a strategy um, to test things out. And uh, there are many decisions that could be made. And for me, I need something that works to be able to see the next step. Um, so it's not a goal in itself. I have something like a proof of concept. It's not a general purpose scheme, although it has aspects of being close to R6RS and it has major gaps. And it's not an alternative for Guile, but um, I'm loading and using Guile modules. So, <coughs> um, Piotr uh, said it, um, inspiration, that's um, what happened to me uh, last year. Um, inspired by geeks, but now I'm doing mess. So what, what do you want? So, <laughs> so as a human being, a hacker, I'm looking for meaning, for autonomy, uh, but also co-creation. Um, want to do something meaning, main, meaningful and fun. Um, so one of the great things, uh, and, and if the goal is greater, then um, my inspiration rises. So an inspiring goal for me is a planet of enlightened beings. Uh, why not? So um, what do I do? I look inward. I try to be happy and try to be helpful. 
another crazy idea which goes in the same direction as far as I'm concerned is a world where all software is free. Totally crazy idea. Um, what I do is I support GNU and I create free software. <laughs> so, um, why am I here uh, at this talk? Um, geeks really inspired me. I've looked at the herd um, 10 or 15 years ago and I wanted to run GNU but it, I didn't manage it. And Geeks feels to me like running GNU, finally. Um, so I just had to do that. It's, it, yeah. Um, the Four Freedoms. Um, if you don't know them, uh, read them. It's terribly inspiring for me. Um, so that was the, f actually, the, so the, the, the seed, the, the Four Freedoms by Richard Stallman got, for me, got the whole thing started. Uh, a lot of things happened, but in 2013, before, my, before I knew about it, Debian started the Reproducible Builds, a Repro Builds project. It didn't have that website, but uh, the idea was, well, um, I want to, um, uh, all software is free, uh, but how, um, how do I know that uh, the binary that I run uh, actually was produced from the source that is free. Is there any way to uh, ascertain that? Um, well, you can study uh, the compiler and you can see what assembly comes out and you can, uh, that goes, uh, but that's, that's very cumbersome. You will have to do that if you compile the program twice, you would maybe have to do that again because it looks different. So, um, Reproducibility gives you uh, a very easy test um, whether um, you can, if you cannot um, uh, reproduce the same binary twice from a piece of source code, um, are there differences? Are they interesting? How, how are you going to do that? So um, I thought uh, Repro Builds is a very inspiring idea. And then um, uh, Geeks came along, and I um, have a small summary here for why uh, why uh, repro builds are so nice. Um, uh, actually, there are there are means to an end. We want autonomy and safety. That's basically it. Um, so, uh, how did we? get here, why is reproducibility and geeks so, so nice? Well, of course we had NixOS who gave us functional package management um, and that made it possible to go, or very easy to go um, from source to reproducible binaries and have the full list of dependencies um, and be bit for bit identical, by, uh, be bit for bit uh, identical. And um, one of the great things uh, about Geeks as a user is something that I like to call uh, binary and source transparency. You can, if you have a program, it's very easy to package that and deploy it only for yourself. It's, it's um, almost no effort, um, but you cannot distinguish it from the rest of the system. So. Um, Philosophically, when you install a package, you build it from source, but usually we use a, the binary substitute, which, which makes it a bit um, quicker, but I will get the same binary as I, as I would have gotten if I had it built it from source. So it feels like building from source, but actually, um, so everything feels like building from source. So. Um, so that's great. We have GNU, we have all source, uh, we build everything from source. But there's this bootstrap binaries thing. Um, <laughs> and that annoyed me. 
<laughs> it's only a tiny speck. I mean, everything is source, everything. Um, so here's our uh, bootstrap graph, which is in the manual. So what are we talking about uh, if we talk about bootstrap binaries? Um, it's too small to read here, but it, it's a dependency graph to, to build the first bootstrap binaries. Um, and here's in a text, um, you, I was wondering, um, well, what kind of binaries are we talking about? It's only 28 megabytes uh, zipped. So the bootstrap binaries are 200 megabytes. Uh, it's not a real problem. We can reproduce them, and, and we do that. But it seems um, ter terribly big to... Uh, uh, so um, I was wondering about that, and then uh, Orion's J came along and... Uh, um, uh, told us about his uh, hex assembler, a self-hosting hex assembler. And I thought, wow, that's great. If you have a self-hosting hex assembler, maybe we can do away with all sources. But I was still going hex and then uh, the, the C compiler, and I didn't really see it. Um, I'll just skip this bit. Um, so I was looking at the bootstrap problem, and there was the hex assembler, and the bootstrap binaries it would fit in Geeks, but I didn't see it. And then I stumbled on, upon an article um, from Alan Kay, an interview with Alan Kay, where he um, uh, said, uh, the big revelation to me was when I finally understood that the half page of code on the bottom page of page uh, the bottom half of page 13 in the Lisp 1.5 manual was Lisp in itself. These were the Maxwell equations of software. So I thought, hmm, if you want to bootstrap a system and you want to do that in the most convenient and small way, well then maybe use something Lispy. Um, yeah, so short path from hex to GCC is obviously using the Maxwell equations of software. Uh, if they are really the Maxwell equations, then it should be the prettiest path that you can imagine. Otherwise, other we have to look for better equations. So that's where the mess comes in. So I looked up the article, um, and this is the bottom half of page 13. <laughs> And to be honest, I've, uh, I had a copy of SIGP and I read some stuff until the exercises uh, come and then I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this evil apply thing in the wizard and I was going, yeah, um, I don't know, am I a wizard, an evil apply, what does it mean? Um, but so... It looks interesting, but I need to see it and play with it to get a feel for, for what it does. But I was inspired enough to try that, and naive enough. <laughs> so this is evil and apply, and uh, what happens is, well, uh, you want an expression evaluated, you give it to evil, and evil says, well, there, uh, it has multiple components. Uh, the start uh, could be a function, so let's evaluate that and uh, the parameters should be evaluated and then handed to apply and apply will say, oh, mate, that's a function, let's execute the function, something. And so you, ca you have some primitive functions, car, cooter, cons, atom. Um, it's very simple, but it's not hard to imagine to add a built-in or a primitive function and extend this guy with C functions or something like that. So you have evil and apply in the core, and then you have some helpers which are not really interesting. Uh, not well, they're interesting, but they're um, they're not interesting. So <laughs> ASOC, Parallels, Fcon, um, and you have the primitives: Atom, Car, Kudor, Cons, and Eek. So this is the first thing I wrote. I just uh, started to type that in in Guile. 
um, I made a module where I removed everything from uh, the Guile module and tried to make sure that I was only running this. So here you have apply. It's literally the same as on the page 13. And there is eval and the not so interesting functions. So, um, great, uh, I can e uh, write my own evil and apply that can uh, execute only the basic primitives and I uh, can write that in Guile and execute it. Beautiful. So the next step was to write it in C. Uh, well, I need to go to hex, but that seemed to be a too big step, so I um, decided to uh, cheat and uh, start with a C implementation, a C prototype. Um, and I very, uh, very soon I found out that um, Lisp 1.5 is really nice and I, I had this evil apply um, uh, layout until the beginning of uh, December and maybe I still want to go back to that but um, uh, I, I first I wanted to bootstrap using Lisp 1.5 and then uh, on top of that implement a full scheme uh, because it's these really are the Maxwell equations I have a prototype that does that um, so then in, in scheme you would extend um, add macros and stuff to uh, eval and not touch these Maxwell equations but that really didn't perform so I started messing with the Maxwell equation then you have uh, something like closures and difference between symbols and keywords and specials and how do you do macros and um, well there's this syntax rules uh, thing so what I wanted to do is when I had the thing running in C I wanted to have my own um, uh, C compiler so first uh, shortest path to success, dump an ELF binary that I can uh, execute. Uh, starting from a simple main function in C. Um, and uh, Rutger who is sitting here, um, I've had a lot of help from him uh, describing my problems. He said, well what you're doing is great but you need a garbage collector. And I said, well um, I don't know, I, I, I bought 16 gig. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So I, I, I took um, uh, SIGP and I started reading about the garbage collector and then I read um, a footnote from Abelson and Sussman where they say well, maybe memories may get large enough so that it would be impossible to run out of free memory. And I thought, well, great, let's go for that. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, I... So here's my minimal uh, NCC uh, parser. So I uh, had to extend the, or I extended the, the prototype in C and a lot of functions in... Uh, in scheme, uh, as, uh, just enough that I could uh, run the Luller uh, um, parser by uh, um, Dominique Boucher, um, and I could uh, parse this guy and dump an ELF binary and run it, and it would print "Hello World." Um, that was in August, and I was, I was going, "Whoa!" Now I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not totally true. <laughs> um, the the me mess could run the Luller parser, um, and it could parse a simple, um, a very not C, but a simple parentheses example. Um, Uh, and when I start wanted to uh, when I wanted to um, uh, 
far as this guy, it, it, it sec faulted. And I couldn't, f there were a lot of problems that I uh, fixed, but it kept sec faulting. It ran for five minutes and then it sec faulted. Uh, well, it turned out that uh, when I accidentally ran top, uh, in five minutes it was consing through my 16 gigs. <laughs> <laughs> So then I uh, came back to Rutger and I implemented the garbage collector, which took me two months to get all the bugs out. Um, but now I could look at uh, NIAC, which is a full C uh, parser that we have. Um, well, we have. Uh, <laughs> um, and I should speed up, I guess. Um, so um, where, uh, where are we now? So we have a full uh, C parser. And um, what I'm doing now is writing the, um, uh, I have a, I have a, 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 a smaller version of MESS, which is uh, 700 lines of C. Um, and the compiler that I wrote in Scheme can uh, compile that guy, and it can, uh, so where are we? Uh, I'm just skipping ahead here. It's called the tiny version of, um, well, the, I divided the problem up in, 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 in smaller parts. I have a tiny mess, which can be, is a C compiler that can be uh, executed uh, or by mass, uh, and it can uh, read uh, a, a, a dumped file, uh, which has an S expression and can print it. So mass can um, compile, yeah, com compile a C program of 300 lines that does that. And then I have the next step, uh, which I'm still working on. Uh, this um, guy can, com um, um, the C, com the uh, sorry about that. Uh, the, the C compiler in Scheme, when I uh, com execute that with Guile, can compile uh, can compile a binary that runs this. It reads an S expression that reads cons uh, O1 and execute that and give the cons. Um, mess cannot at the moment uh, do this um, and I'm working on that. There are some statements that are still not parsed by mess. Um, there is a Geeks uh, package, it's not in Geeks itself. I wanted to have the compiler really working so that it's self-hosting. Expect that in one or two months to, be, to have a self-hosting uh, C compiler in Scheme. Um, Yes, so uh, where to go next when we have that? Is that useful at all? Um, that's actually my biggest question. Um, I can imagine it's nice to have a C compiler uh, in Guile, but a serious C compiler project in Guile would mean that if I use that in MESS, MESS would have to be more mature, and I don't want to rebuild Guile because we already have that. So, mm, maybe make Guile so easy that it can self-host itself. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and then there's Chris Weber who said, well, you, ha you have the, um, have you looked at pre-scheme? Because your prototype is in C. Um, why not start from a schemish? Uh, language, or you have a compiler anyway, so take the the work on pre-scheme um, and don't don't well, throw away the the C the the C source. Hmm? You should probably explain what pre-scheme is because I don't think many people. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> pre-scheme is um, a subset of Scheme, which is part of uh, Scheme 48. And 
Scheme 48 will take pre-scheme and compile that um, to um, C. And then um, the C is uh, compiled, so uh, yeah, Scheme is taken as a source library. Um, but as we have a C compiler, we don't need to go to C. We can take that as an intermediate stage. Um, yeah, that, so that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, get rid of the bootstrap binaries, and I have something that work that works. But I'm uh, wondering if it's useful at all, and what the next smart step could be. So, questions. My dream is exactly the same thing, to have a self-built hardware and, and running some fully bullshit software like this. There's only one that I'm able to do. It's superior to list, and sometimes when I work with it, it's for me. Because what we do, just write a little assembly thing, little interpreter, you keep it running rest and byte code. So my suggestion, if you want to play with them, I would write like three assembly versions for different platforms like ARM, you know, Intel 32 bit, 64 bit, and bootstrap from this and try to get the list running out of this assembler, like right? mini list. And, and because the only reason you need C is portability. Right? So yeah. it would be actually much cooler to have a little as machine code bootstrap running micro list, well, frisky maybe, I don't know, whatever, and then just run from there and you can. Well, because this is just your portability delay. Okay. Thank you. I think it's Thank you. very important. Let's uh, yeah, we'll keep the talk about that. <laughs> yep. So, did I get it right that the ENIAC compiler running on Guy can compile MESS, right? Yes. But the ENIAC compiler running on MESS can. No, 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 sorry. Uh, no, it can compile the, the tiny uh, mess thing, the thing that reads the as expression and display it. Um, the, the one that uh, runs cons needs some more constructions in C, but that's just more work. Okay. But anyway, I agree with what was said. It's really important and I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah,